Hello, welcome to Time for Art Video Hop, hosted by the Mary Atelier YouTube channel, listed down below in the description box. And uh, the theme this month is a diorama, and you can see how I've just cut open a cereal box, and the basic, I'm just showing in photos, the basic first steps of black gesso, phalo blue for the sky, and the basic design that I painted to begin. And now I'm going to show you video of paint um, getting started and painting a replica of the world famous masterpiece Starry Night by Vincent Van Gogh painted in 1889 and now I would like to share with you some interesting facts and oh before I do that let me just say um, as part of this video hop please after watching my video please be sure to check out the other amazing artists in this video hop listed down in a list in the description box below so here are some interesting facts about the famous masterpiece Starry Night. Sometimes a painting isn't just a painting, it's a look into the soul of the creator. Vincent van Gogh's masterpiece is one of the most valuable paintings in the world. Number one, Starry Night was painted in, a, in an insane asylum. Vincent van Gogh had a troubled life. The events that led up to him cutting off part of his own ear, which was just a small part of his earlobe, at the end of 1888 made him decide it was enough. So he checked himself into an asylum called St. Paul de Massol. Two, what inspired Van Gogh for this painting? We can find the answer to this question in one of his numerous letters to his bro brother Theo, which, which he wrote. He wrote, This morning I saw the country from my window, a long time before sunrise, with nothing but the morning star, which looked very big. Three, it wasn't painted from where he saw it. One of the most interesting facts about Starry Night is that he didn't create the painting from where he could actually see it. In fact, during the one-year stay at the asylum, Van Gogh had a bedroom located on the second floor and a painting studio on the first floor where he could paint. It was impossible to get a, a view from the ground floor, from the ground floor studio. Four, Starry Night misses something important. Vincent painted his um, interpretation of the view from his asylum bedroom window, but, sometime, but something crucial is missing here. It does not depict the window bars, and there's proof that they were there as he wrote, he had mentioned that detail in a letter to his brother. And number five, there was something else also missing in the painting. At least when looking out of his bedroom window, it's been discovered that Van Gogh wouldn't have not, would not have been able to see the village of Saint-Rémy-de-Provence Saint from the second floor bedroom window. This leaves art historians with an important question. Did he use a sketch he created earlier from the actual village of St. Remy, or did it? Did he improvise and even use elements from villages in his home country of the Netherlands? And um, as of now, this question remains open. Six, Van Gogh did study the sky, though. A study, a study by art historian Albert Baum has discovered that the sky in the Starry Night painting is a perfect representation of how it actually looked like the moment he created this painting. For this study, they for this study they actually recreated the same stretch of the sky on the exact location and the moment Van Gogh wrote to his brother that he had that he had completed the painting at 4 a.m. June 19, 1889. 7. Starry Night wasn't the first Starry Night. The painting we all the painting we are discussing here is the 
the official Starry Night, but Van Gogh actually already painted similar paintings earlier. It started when he arrived in Arles and became obsessed with capturing the night sky. His first attempt followed in early September 1888 and then shortly followed by a second one of Starry Night series called Starry Night Over the Rhone. Fact number eight, it appears Starry Night references to death. Vincent van Gogh was clearly losing all control over his life by the time he created Starry Night. He didn't, he didn't only lose faith in religion, he wrote, he wrote some remarkable things to his brother as well in this period. In one letter to his brother he wrote, I need a starry night with cypresses or perhaps above a field of ripe wheat. There are some really beautiful nights here. Cypresses are mostly associated with cemeteries and death. In another letter he wrote, Just as we take the train to get to Tarascon or Ruin, we take death to reach a star. And now um, we'll, I'm going to take a break with some music and come back with some more interesting facts in a few moments. Number nine, the stars might be references to the afterlife. At the same time, Van Gogh makes some remarkable mentions about his belief in an afterlife 
in a letter he wrote to his brother. While the cypresses he added to the starry night potentially reflect death, they also represent immortality and they appear to be reaching into the sky. 10. Van Gogh unknowingly painted Venus. The same study that recreated the sky at the location and moment Van Gogh painted the starry night has confirmed that the planet Venus is indeed included in the painting. At the time the painting was created, Van Gogh must have considered the bright, the bright shining Venus as the morning star he had referred to in his letters. Eleven, the moon isn't an exact representation. Yet another thing the study discovered is that the moon was not in the crescent phase during this period that Van Gogh painted Starry Night. Instead, the moon was in gibbous at the time, which means it was about three quarters full. One theory presented by Albert Baum is that Van Gogh originally intended to paint it at the, as the gibbous moon, but changed his mind and gave it a more traditional and recognizable image. 12. Is Starry Night overrated? Most likely nobody in their right mind would think so, but then again Vincent Van Gogh definitely did think, did think so. He actually thought his painting Starry Night was a failure and the main reason he called it a, a failure is because he felt he painted the stars too big. If we, if we link that with the potential explanation of the painting, his version of the stars representing the afterlife, this remark seems pretty strange to say the least. 13. Starry Night is one of the most expensive paintings in the world. Not bad for a painting that a creator d deemed as a failure, right? In fact, in fact, um, it's the second most valuable painting of um, the second most valuable painting on the list of paintings which were that are in public collections. The estimated value is nine hundred million dollars. And this does not include paintings from private collections in, this, uh, in that fact. It's only a quote of the value of paint of being the second most valuable painting that, that exists in public collections. And where is Starry Night now? It's at the Modern Museum of Art in New York City. And uh, the MoMA can thank Lily P. Bliss for acquiring Starry Night. Lily P. P. Bliss was the daughter of a rich industrial who became one of the leading art collectors in New York City and was an important figure in the founding of the, of the Museum of Modern Art.
in light of how valuable Starry Night is today, it is very sad that Van Gogh only did sell one and possibly two paintings in his whole lifetime, and neither one of them was the Starry Night. The one known for sure to have been sold was the far lesser known, the Red Vineyard of Arles, which was completed in November 1888 before the breakdown that sent him to the asylum. Belgian artist and collector Anna Bach purchased it for 400 francs at the Les 20 exhi exhibition in 1890. Today, this historic painting is on display at the Pushkin Museum of Fine Arts in Moscow, but there is evidence that Van Gogh sold a second painting. In his biography of the artist, historian Mark Edo Tarabot talked about a letter from Theo saying one of Van Gogh's self-portraits found its way to a London art dealer. And the Starry Night was, owned, was twice owned by Theo's widow. Following Van Gogh's death in 1890, Theo inherited all of his brother's paintings. But when he died in the fall of 1891, Theo's wife, Johanna Van Gogh, became the owner of Starry Night and many other of his paintings. It was Johan Johanna Van Gogh who became the owner of Starry Night, okay, I just said that, and who collected and edited the brother's correspondence for publication. And she is credited with building Van Gogh's posthumous fame. Thanks to her, her tireless promotions of his work and exhibitions. And then in 1900, uh, Johanna Van Gogh sold Starry Night to French poet Julien Leclerc, who soon, who then soon sold it to post-impressionist artist Emil Schufnecker, and six years later, she bought the painting back from Schufnecker so she could pass it along to the Old Olden Zeal Gallery in Rotterdam. <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you.